The Royals, along with Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas City, are teaming up to shut out the stigma of behavioral health. And we have a great guest today for that, Ryan Maid, who's in his fourth year as the Director of Behavioral Science. And before that, in a previous life, he spent seven years as a psychologist with the United States Navy and dealing with Navy SEALs, which is a, a fascinating topic. But tying that into your role now in behavioral health, What's, what's the common thread that you've observed with that Navy SEALs have and, and Major League Baseball performers have or, or just maybe a leader in, in the front office for the Royals? What do they all have in common? We talk a lot about just guys who are really organized, disciplined, resilient, and when we define resiliency, we talk about bending but not breaking, being able to handle a lot of different things that come at you because life's very unpredictable. And in this game, one of the things that is predictable that you is that you will fail a lot. Guys who are really good at this understand that failure is inevitable. Falling down is mandatory, but getting up is optional. And that's something that we, we really work with our guys on is, is how do you get up? How do you keep continuing to strive forward and, and, and perform, kind of, kind of keep a mission first mentality? And that's what we are doing a lot of in the behavioral science department. How do you, how do you sift through the ashes with failure and, and take that bending but not break attitude and use, use failure as a way to build as opposed to, to just breaking down. Yeah, one of the things that we talk about is just doing an after action on what did you learn from the experience? Always thinking about what's two things you did well, what's thing, one thing you can improve upon? And reminding yourself that, yeah, failure is an opportunity to learn about yourself and how you deal with failure, how you manage failure, and that it's okay to fail. It's not written anywhere that in life that you don't fail. And whether you're a professional athlete or a military service member or a or a youngster playing baseball, like failure is inevitable. And, and if you can prepare for the fact that you are gonna fail, it actually brings down the pressure of failure. And, and when we do have our failures, at times we have uh, moments to reflect. You know, we can look back on it and, and as you said, you know, what did we do well, what did we not do well? What are some practical tips that people with good behavioral health have in the moment when there isn't a day or a week or a month to process what's going on, but they know I'm good at this. It's not working right now, but I'm good at this. So I, I think healthy people will, will look at their situation and we talk about appraisal versus reappraisal. Our initial appraisal, oftentimes when we're not doing really well, it's not always the healthiest and that's okay. That's normal. We talk about normal, situ normal responses to abnormal situations. And when you don't do so well in that environment, you're gonna have a normal response to that. And that's your initial appraisal. And then we talk about your reappraisal, which is, is that, okay, I recognize that the first thought may not, been, may not been the most productive, so how do I let that one kind of just roll by me like a, like a parade passing by or like a leaf floating on the river? And then focus on the task at hand right now, which is executing my next pitch, or my next at bat, or the next inning, or the next game, or going home and talking with my spouse, or whatever it is, parenting. It's just focusing on what's important right now. How would you describe the Kansas City Royals organization and, and how they deal with behavioral health from the top all the way down in that all the success is tied together. And truthfully, Ryan, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Dayton Moore and his vision on, on this department. And one of the things that really attracted me to this organization is, is knowing that the leadership that he brings to the table on, on caring about human beings. And, and one of the things that we talked about in my former life was that humans are more important than hardware. And that is really important from, from Dayton's vision. And, and what I believe philosophically and, and our organization all the way to the top to Mr. Sherman believes that. And so that allows us to work together collaboratively with other departments, whether it be player development, leadership development, whether it be research and development, we're all working together. And, and for one common goal is to provide a, a unique resource for our athletes to perform at their best under any circumstance. From a leadership perspective, and this I think applies to people outside of, of baseball, you or the organization identifies, let's say a player that and maybe there's a, a behavioral issue that's keeping them from performing on the field. Timing is everything in life. Approaching that player at the right time, getting them to consider something different other than spending another hour in the batting cage. For, for a leader, um, whether it's a leader in the home or at a school or an office or whatever, what, what's, what's the good first step if you wanna take that approach towards someone as opposed to the American way of just, hey, try harder, try harder and do more? Well, I think you got to have good rapport and a good trust with, with the person you're working with. And so our coaches do a tremendous job of being able to build that rapport and relationship first and, and know that trust is something that's really difficult to earn but hard to, uh, easy to break. 
and so I think when you have trust of the athletes that you're working with, that allows an opportunity for growth from an instructional standpoint. So we, we work a lot with our coaching staff on how to build relationships and skills, um, using them as a catalyst for our athletes. And so, um, you know, one of the things that it comes down to, this is a relational industry, and our players know, at least I hope they know, that our coaching staff and front office staff, we care about them as human beings. And that opens that door first to be able to, to help them on a more cerebral level. What's a good first question or a good first step to establish trust with someone where maybe there isn't the trust there that you wish that you had? I think one of the first good questions I always think about is, is how can I help? Or And mean it. And mean, 100%. How can I help? Mm -hmm. What can I help you with? And I think that opens the door to say that I'm not here to just tell you what to do because that's not what we're here for. Okay. So. Ryan, thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. If you'd like more information, go to shutoutthestigma.com.